Did you know that Canada spends $24.2 billion every year on military equipment? More money than what Sweden, Denmark, and Norway spend on their military combined, making Canada ranks within the top 20 highest military spenders in the world. Thus, Canadian Armed Forces should have a dependable collection of military equipment and technologies unlike the bottom tier countries. In the Canadian Army, our first equipment category is Armored Fighting Vehicles, Leopard 2, A6M, a variant of Leopard 2, third generation German main battle tank. 20 units were permanently transported from the German Army to Canada. Leopard 2, A4-2, A4M, another variant of Leopard 2 tank, but these were purchased from the Netherlands. The deal was for 100 tanks. Ever since 2007, these tanks have gone through major upgrades. There are only 54 units that are in service after they converted a large number of them to training and donating some to Ukraine Armed Forces. Track Light Armored Vehicle, TLAV, an American tracked armored personnel carrier, entered the service of Canadian Army around 1960. Only 135 are left, and they are being replaced with the Super Bison by 2025. Bison, Canadian Armored Personnel Carrier, said to be replaced by the Light Armored Combat Support Vehicle, Super Bison by 2025. Coyote, also Canadian-made armored reconnaissance vehicle. 85 units were purchased and entered service in 2016, but it was set to be replaced by 66 upgraded Light Armored Vehicle 6, LRSS. Light Armored Vehicle 6, a LAV-6, a fourth-generation Canadian-built Light Armored Vehicle. There are currently 616 units in service of the Army as infantry section carriers, command post vehicles, and observation post vehicles. Light Armored Vehicle, Super Bison, also from Canada. The Army has made an order for 360 vehicles back in 2019 to replace M113 and Bison vehicles. The Super Bison have been ordered with configurations to fit the role of troop cargo vehicle, command post vehicle, electronic warfare vehicle, Textron Tactical Armored Patrol Vehicle, TAPV, Canadian Armored Patrol and Reconnaissance Vehicle, 500 units are serving the Canadian Army and taking multiple roles on top of its primary designated role, such as command and control, VIP transport, and troop transport. Artillery is next. C3 Close Support Gun, a Canadian copy of the American M101 Howitzer. 98 units exist in the Army at the moment. LG Mark II, a French-made towed howitzer that was upgraded from LG-1 to increase reliability and lifespan. 28 operational units are in service. M777, a British 155mm howitzer. Canada donated four units to Ukraine, leaving them with 33 units in service. For air defense, Canada owns the RBS-70, a man-portable air defense system made by Sweden. In 2024, the Canadian troops are expected to report receiving this surface-to-air missile system, and the rest are anti-unmanned air systems. Falcon Shield, a British-made anti-UAV system, expected to enter the Canadian Army service in 2024. Orion H-9, a counter-UAS or counter-unmanned air system built by Singapore, also planned to arrive in 2024. CACI Beam 3, an American anti-UAV system, also expected to be delivered in 2024. Next equipment category is Unmanned Ground Systems, Remotely Operated Mine Clearance System, Romex. Just like its name, this system is used as an explosive clearance system made by a Canadian company. Four are in service. Multi-Agent Tactical Sentry, MATS. Locally made unmanned ground system, remotely operated chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear reconnaissance system. Four units are in service of the Army. Tellerob Theodor, a German-made EOD robot, stands for Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unmanned Ground Vehicle. It is considered to be the largest of its kind in the Canadian Army. 25 units will remain in service until 2030. ECA Cobra, Mark II, French ground robot for disabling explosives. 20 units are currently reserving Canada. SEA Camelion LG, nine French ground robots serving the military, ordered at the same time as the ECA Cobra Mark II. Nexter, Nerva, LG, and Nexter, Nerva, SysX, French-made unmanned ground vehicles, designated to be multi-purpose robots capable of changing roles depending on the installed modules. Canada purchased nine of Nerva, LG, and 79 of Nerva, XX, iRobot, ROV, American-made remotely operated CBRN, 
chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear reconnaissance robot. The Army has 20 operational units. After the ground robots, next is unmanned aerial vehicles, RQ-21, Blackjack, unmanned surveillance and reconnaissance aerial vehicle built by the United States. Canada currently has 10. RQ-11B Raven, American hand-launched remote-controlled drone. The Army owns 15 operational units. Black Hornet 3. A Norwegian military microdrone, one of the most widely operated UAVs in the world. Even the USA has requested the Black Hornet. Canada currently owns three, according to the latest reports. And now, the Canadian Air Force. Aircraft, McDonnell Douglas, CF-18, Hornet. American multi-role fighter aircraft. Canada requested a total of 138, 98 CF-18A and 40 CF-18B, only 79 in operational use the rest either in inventory or lost in accidents. F-35, a Lightning II, the most advanced American all-weather stealth multi-role combat aircraft designed for air superiority and conducting strike missions. Canada ordered 88 F-35As. Four units are expected to arrive in 2026 and the rest 84 to be delivered by 2032. Lockheed CP-140 Aurora, American Maritime Patrol Aircraft. The Air Force has planned to replace its fleet of 15 Lockheed CP-140M by Boeing P-8A. Boeing P-8A, American-made maritime patrol and reconnaissance aircraft. The Air Force has ordered a fleet of 16 aircrafts to begin delivery by 2026. Beechcraft Super King Air 350ER or CE-145 Vigilance, a surveillance and reconnaissance aircraft. The Air Force ordered three. Two of them have been delivered. Sikorsky CH-148 Cyclone, a twin-engine, multi-role shipborne helicopter, serves the Canadian military as an anti-submarine warfare, capable of carrying two Mark 46 torpedoes. Canada has 25 operational units. Next is unmanned aerial vehicle, MQ-9 B Sky Guardian, also known as General Atomics MQ-9 Reaper an American unmanned combat aerial vehicle. It has both features remotely controlled or autonomous flight operations, also capable of providing the foundation for all military operations, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Canadian Armed Forces ordered 11, with a start delivery from 2028. IAI Heron, medium altitude, long endurance, Israeli aerial vehicle, capable of enduring up to 52 hours at up to 10.5 kilometers. Only two are in service. RQ-21 Blackjack, also known as Boeing, in situ. RQ-21 Blackjack, an American small tactical unmanned air system, also for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. Canada has 10 operational units. UMS Skeldar V-200, a Swedish medium-range vertical takeoff and landing unmanned aerial vehicle. It can be used for surveillance, intelligence gathering, light cargo transportation, and electronic warfare. Only six operational units are in service. Moving on to the Canadian Navy. And starting with submarines. Upholder, or Victoria class. A British-built diesel electric fleet of four submarines entered the service of the Canadian Navy in 1998. Since then, they have upgraded their weapon installations. Frigates. Halifax class, a fleet of 12 multi-role vessels with anti-submarine and anti-aircraft as well as anti-ship capabilities. Offshore patrol ships, Harry DeWolf class, fleet of two offshore patrol warships, built by the Canadian government, entered service in 2021. Maritime coastal defense vessels, Kingston class, fleet of 12 coastal defense multi-role ships, serving the Canadian Navy. The ships are equipped with a mechanical minesweeping system, bottom object inspection vehicles, and route survey system. Patrol and training vessels, Orca class. Fleet of eight vessels, tasked with several roles from training the naval officers and non-commissioned sailors in different fields like engineering and communications, to patrolling the coastal waters for pollution, fishing violations, and search and rescue operations. These are the list of major upcoming combat and surveillance equipment that are entering the service of the Canadian Armed Forces in the next few years. The Canadian Army has put in an order of 360 light armored combat support vehicle, Super Bison. The delivery started back in 2021. The Army also ordered an unspecified number of the RBS-70, as well as Falcon Shield, Orion H-9, Kasai Beam-3, all scheduled to be delivered in 2024. The Air Force, as we said before, ordered 88 F-35A Lightning II, 
scheduled to be delivered by 2032. Canada also ordered 16 Boeing P-8A with a starting delivery date in 2026. CC-295 Kingfisher, which was planned for 16 units to be delivered in 2022, but it was unexpectedly delayed to 2025 or 2026. Three new CH-149 Cormorant are set to be delivered alongside the upgraded 13 older aircraft of CH-149. One of the major investments the Canadian Air Force has made, the Air Force ordered 11 units of MQ-9B Sky Guardian with delivery from 2028. The Canadian Armed Forces lately has started gearing up, leveling up their defenses and capabilities. With a budget of $24.2 billion, Canada is ranked within the top 15 highest military spenders. One of the things that Canada's Army struggles with is personnel. About only 68,000 active personnel in 2021. For a large country, that's a very small number. On top of the lack of strong aircraft, Canada, without the F-35 currently, is behind as one of the major U.S. allies' air forces. Australia, for example, is more capable than Canada in that regard, as well as air defense and Navy capabilities. Canada's military power can be compared to the armed forces of Sweden, Singapore, Spain, and Australia when it comes to the Army. The good thing about Canada is they are building their arsenal as we speak and proactively reacting to the current state of the world, buying new equipment and developing new technologies with the help of the U.S., of course. That was a quick overview of the Canadian Armed Forces combat equipment. If you'd like to know about other nations' forces equipment like Australia, click right here. Also, I suggest you subscribe if you don't want to miss the next military equipment review. I really appreciated it too. Thank you for watching and catch you later.